All right, good morning, guys. Um, we're going to go ahead and start doing online uh, instruction for the foreseeable future. If you need printed copies, can you please email me and let me know? And we'll organize a pickup site somewhere for you guys to pick up that stuff. But the philosophy here is that uh, we are going to have an AP exam still in the early month of May. So we need to get the instruction out to you. And this is one of the ways that I can do this. So screen recordings for instruction on your end. Uh, you do the work. If you have questions, please contact me through email or Google Classroom. But this is how we're going to move forward uh, for the foreseeable future and uh, just do the best we can with our uh, current situation. So we're going to start today with uh, topic 7.3, Imperialism and the Long-Term Causes of the Spanish-American War. I also have a printed copy of these notes for you so you can also look at them. You also have to keep in mind that I'm doing this from home and there's going to be distractions, dogs barking, kids yelling, uh, etc. and that sort of thing. So please uh, keep that in mind uh, while we do these. So let's get started. So long-term causes of the Spanish-American War uh, overseas. So long-term causes of over overseas expansions, uh, expansion, a closing of the frontier in the United States. And the frontier is commonly known as the West. So uh, the U.S. was going to either expand or explode. Uh, safety valve uh, was the end of the frontier. There was a uh, Turner thesis out there that was uh, a majority opinion at the time. And what the Turner thesis was that after the closing of the American frontier, Harvard professor Frederick Jackson Turner wrote a thesis in 1893 that concluded that the West, or the frontier, personified the story of America. He displayed the importance of how the frontier line had always sparked individual strength and democracy. He believed that the West was the most important component of the American story. Adversaries of the thesis concluded that Turner was overemphasizing the importance of the frontier as other issues like immigration and industrializations were much larger stories at the time. Another cause, a long-term cause uh, of imperialism was the transcontinental railroad had connected the coast. Everything was connected from the east to the west coast. You could walk from the east to the west coast and you, every time you took a step, you were in a state. There were no more territories. So economic reasons, um, the U.S. had recovered from the Civil War with the largest economy in the world, uh, the biggest transportation network in the world as well, and the biggest producer of steel, and it had a booming economy. And the U.S. had to, uh, needed to look for, for new markets uh, in China and Japan, um, pursued the open-door policy, uh, need for overseas markets for the increased industrial and farm productions. So there were moral reasons as well. There was some racial uh, superiority beliefs, sense of a mission. It was the white man's burden to, uh, to spread this. There was a social Darwinism thought where the earth belonged to the strong and the fit. So that were the... Uh, thinkings of uh, Americans at this time. Also, there was geopolitical reasons. Alfred Thayer Mahan, the prophet of big uh, navies, uh, influence of the sea power. So a strong country equaled a strong navy, equaled the need coaling ports around the world. So the U.S. began to build up their navy in the 1880s and 1890s. One problem with a big navy is uh, where do you put it? East Coast? What if it's someone attacked the West? How would you get your ships all the way to the West Coast? You'd have to sail down around the tip of uh, South America and all the way back up to get to California or the West Coast. What happens when someone attacked both sides? But what if you built a canal and you have to control the Caribbean? So 
Imperial land grab came about. Other countries were doing it worldwide. If the U.S. didn't take over Puerto Rico, Cuba, the Panama Canal, Hawaii, the Philippines, and someone else would. Likely, the thought was the United Kingdom, Germany, or Japan. So you can see that here. The China, Japan, the open door policy. These are long term causes. Now we're going to talk about the short term causes here. You see a picture, a famous picture. This is the picture of the battleship that was named after our beautiful state, the USS Maine, which was parked in Havana Harbor in Cuba. And during this time, there was an explosion. Uh, it was thought that it was uh, Cuban, uh, actually it was a Spanish, that sabotaged the Maine and blew it up. And later, uh, in 1976, 1977, the report came out that there was a malfunction on board and it was a complete accident. So the U.S. used this uh, situation to go ahead and use this as an explanation to declare war on Spain. So short-term causes of the Spanish-American War. Cuba in revolt against Spain, torching sugarcane fields. Revolt is crushed by the Spanish and civilians are put into concentration camps. Fear that if Spain loses control of Cuba, stronger European power, Britain or Germany, will swoop in and claim Cuba for themselves. The Spanish Empire in the 1890s was in terrible shape. It was ruled by King Alfonso VIII. He was 12 years old. Difficult for them to give up any more of their empire. There was hardly anything left. Spain had tried to offer Cuba self-government but remain in the empire. Cubans could read the situation and sense they had an opportunity for full independence. Philippines and Cuba were the crown jewels of the Spanish Empire. Yellow press clamored for war. Spain was weak. Cuba was, white, was ripe for the taking. Pulitzer sent artists to Cuba to draw horrors and atrocities that did not exist. This is where we get the term yellow journalism. Uh, you furnish the pictures, I'll furnish the war, was the quote. Mass uh, newspapers had enabled a national dialogue and could shape public opinion, um, also known as propaganda. The USS Maine, February 15th, mysterious explosion of the USS Maine killed 260 men. Some sources say 216 of the 400 on board died. Spain was blamed for the by the press. Perceived cause was that a Spanish diver had planted a mine on the ship, even though explosion caused by boiler problems on the ship, salvaged in 1911, first major salvage operation. Uh, President McKinley's response called for a public report on cause of explosion. He was called Judas, in quotes, and Benedict Arnold, and both know from history that they were both traitors. Uh, by the press for being weak and not demanding a war right away. Report in April said it was Spanish mine. Asked Congress for permission to use military force, not war. House voted uh, 311 to 6, and the Senate voted 42 to 35. Not directly elected, insulated from the public. A Spanish response. Uh, this is page 695 in your American pageant books. Why would we bomb them? American uh, jingos are not even worth the honor of our saliva we might use in spitting at their faces, was the quote from the Spanish. Uh, more consequences of the Spanish-American War right here. And you can see that the Hawaiian Islands are blown up. So consequences of imperialism slash the Spanish-American War. Course of the war. Unique things about war. Only 10 weeks long. A disease killed 5,000 out of the 5,500 fatalities, so only 500 died from military action, but 5,000 died from disease. Embalmed beef killed many as well. Enlisted and served with community, 25% of fighting force in Cuba was African American. Americans won by blockading Spanish in Cuba and controlling water supply. People in Santiago reduced to eating rodents. Territorial acquisitions from this Spanish-American War was acquisition of the Philippines. George Dewey immediately captured Philippines, which was a Spanish colony. In August 1898, troops landed in Philippines and coordinate with the insurgents there. Uh, the Philippines opens up a hornet's nest. Uh, there was imperialism debate 
people who were in favor, it's a white man's burden. It was also a gateway to Asia, which mean, meant money. But the Filipinos don't know what's good for them. That was our thought. Uh, need to be civilized. Good naval base. Uh, it supported the troops. Could gradually give uh, independence to the Philippines. U.S. can become a great nation, gain world respect. Philippines would suffer far more under another country. U.S. would secure private property, suppress crime, establish judicial system, ensure religious freedom, build schools and roads uh, if we occupied the Philippines. The opposition uh, theory was it was too expensive to do, hypercritical, goes against Declaration of Independence, uh, I need to have consent of the governed, uh, make us into an oppressor, would lead to foreign entanglements, non caucasians shouldn't be Americans, was another thought, Constitution doesn't allow for colonies. This was the opposing views. Uh, the capitalist argument wins, so the insurrection Begins on eight in on 1899. Emilio Aguado, guerrilla warfare uh, against the Americans. Philippines finally acquire independence in 1946, which is a long time uh, that the U.S. was there. So it set the stage for the conflict with Japan. So let's talk about Hawaii. So the annexation of Hawaii. Hawaii in 1890 had 40,000 Hawaiians, 30,000 Asians. It was a huge sugar industry. And it only had 2,000 Americans. 1890, McKinley Tariff had shut Hawaiian sugar producers out of the American market. Sugar producers pushed for a coup and annexation to get around the tariff. Queen Lulu Kalani threatened to behead plotters if restored to throne. Grover Cleveland thought coup was unfair, refused to annex Hawaii while he was in office, also thought Hawaii was a mongrel nation. It was annexed immediately after Dewey's victory in the Philippines. The United States needed a naval refueling station halfway between the U.S. and the Philippines. So, here it begins a long history of intervening in Cuban affairs. The Teller Amendment, passed before the war, promised Cuba, Cuba their independence when Spain surrendered. Congress didn't trust McKinley, thought we wanted a war so we acquire more land. It forced the Cubans to make Platt Amendment part of their constitution. U.S. could intervene and restore order in case of anarchy. U.S. could trade freely with Cuba. U.S. could get naval base of Guantanamo Bay, which we have today. Let's see the slide right here. Force Cubans to make... Oh, I already read that. Uh, Guam! Guam is, uh, the U.S. currently has 100,000 bombs in Guam and 66 million gallons of jet fuel. It is the most commanding platform in the Pacific for projection of United States power. Air Force's most strategic gas and go base. The U.S. continues to use it to prevent China from becoming regional force. So, Latin American diplomacy, the U.S. became increasingly involved in Caribbean affairs to protect sea lanes. Roosevelt's big stick diplomacy. So uh, Roosevelt and was corollary to the Monroe Doctrine. Latin American nations having a hard time paying their debts to European debtors. By 1914, Latin America countries were 10 million. Uh, excuse me, 10 billion in debt. Half of it owed to Great Britain. U.S. determined to take over over and handle any intervention in Latin America on behalf of Europe, thus keeping Europe out. The dollar diplomacy, by uh, 1929, 40% of U.S. international investments were in Latin America. Example, oil industry in Mexico was mainly owned by U.S. investors, similar to British ownership of Iranian oil in the 1940s and 1950s. A Panama Canal, Spanish-American War made America realize how badly it would be needed. The U.S. now had Hawaii and the Philippines. U.S. helped Panama break away from Colombia to gain its independence. Affirmed America's presence as a world power. By winning control of the Caribbean and the Gulf, U.S. finally took advantage of its favorite geographic location, began to project power into the Atlantic and Pacific. So that's end for uh, the lecture. I will provide these notes in classroom so you can have a visual as well as auditory. So I'll be posting some work. If you have any questions about that with topic 7.3, please email me. All right, be well.